journeys I've been on, this is one that I'm really quite frightened about. I mean, what happens when you die? That's life's greatest mystery. And I know a lot of people believe that you can communicate with people who have died, but it's not something I've ever experienced. Not at all. Will I ever be able to do that when I'm not even sure that it's possible? If anyone could help me to reach a better understanding of such intangible communication, it would be my tutor, Steve Lamont. Steve has been teaching people how to talk to the dead for over 10 years, but when he's not tapping into the higher powers of mind and spirit, he uses the much more down-to-earth practical tools of an upholsterer. I tracked him down to his workshop. How long did it take you before you felt that you'd reached the level you wanted to reach? It took me, I'd say, a couple of years before I knew what was spirit and what wasn't spirit. So did you feel doubt at the beginning? You thought, what did you think was happening? Doubt. When I first I came mean... into this, I was very sceptical. I, I was doubting that mediums can bring f people through from spirit because I thought it was like it would be disturbing them. But actually, it's them who want to come through to us. It's not us want to, you know, just want to contact them. It's, you know, it's a two-way thing. I've met people who, when they first started having these experiences, their first thought was, I'm going mad, I'm hearing yeah. voices. I didn't think I was going mad, that? no. No, I knew that, that I, I always had a knowing that there was people around me and I knew really? that, I knew if it was my sister next to me, I knew if it was a certain friend. Oh, I, d I don't have any specific beliefs. I don't, I don't... Doesn't matter. It Does that No. not matter? Do so I not need to believe that spirits are there and they can communicate with us to be begin with? In a way, but it's just to be open-minded. If you don't, if you didn't believe in that, you'd be putting a block up and I think it would be sure. very hard to, sure. to sort of develop that. Are there ever times when you think, gosh, I wish I didn't see things, I wish I didn't hear things? I mean, does it not drive you mad sometimes if you're... Um, that, I've learnt how to turn it on and off. Oh, really? That is the first, the first thing when you, when you learn to be a medium, is you learn how to close down. And that is the one, that's the first thing I teach any student. Really? And that is very important, because otherwise you, they're going to come through whenever they want. Is that what was yeah. happening to you before? To give you for an, an, an instance, when I first started developing, one night I forgot to close down before I went to bed and I was woken up by a greasy biker came in my bedroom, like a spirit person, and I saw him as clear as I'm seeing you and it, it, it shocked me. But it was a message for a friend of mine, he worked for a dispatch company and it was someone who'd come through for him and had a very important message for him. Oh my so, goodness. And I said, to my, I said to my guys, don't ever let that happen again and it hasn't. On my path to you know, trying to learn some of this and experience some of this myself. Where, yeah. where, where should I start? I'm, I mean, I'm taking a circle, so you can come along and join that. What's a circle exactly? A circle is where we all sort of practice linking with spirits. Ah. And I also teach other psychic gifts like flower reading. Steve, it takes many years. flower reading? <laughs> a flower is a living thing. So you're sort of picking up about the person's spirit and about, you know, the, a real close sight of them, you know, about how they are. It's a very spiritual vibration. Flowers? Hmm, I wasn't sure how a flower could help me to talk to the dead. Still, bizarre though it sounds, this was to be my first training exercise. Putting my doubts aside for now, first things first, choosing the right flowers for the job. Flowers in hand, the next stop was the local spiritualist church to meet up with a handful of other trainees like me, also under Steve's tutelage. I want you to start by, you've got an aura around you, which is... But um, before I could join the circle, to Steve took me through the mental ritual I'd need to practice to open up and close down before and after trying to communicate with spirit. Around the solar plexus area. Imagine a flower opening up there. You're tuning in like a radio tunes in to a radio wave. It's, you're actually tuning right. yourself into spirits by doing this. Did you get a sudden surge at the eye then? Um, I, don't, I, I do feel kind of, sort of tingly. Sort yeah, of. yeah. Maybe a bit detached from where yeah, you that's, are. Yeah, that's that right. right. Yeah. Okay. It's, what it is actually, you're just changing your vibration away from the physical, everyday life. So just put your hands over there, James, over the flowers. And themselves, yeah. Yeah. Somehow, by holding the flowers, I was now supposed to be able to give personal messages to Joanna, who was also part of the circle. Help! Something pop into my head, please! 
I'm thinking about a town rather than countryside in, in the past. I just had the thought in my head that maybe, I don't know, you enjoy... It's something to do with music, like, um, it might be singing. I love singing. After you? Yes, I love music, that's oh, bottom. Okay. Oh, good. Gone a bit blank now, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Just let everything go. Okay. Just clear the mind. And, I, and for some reason, I did. I just thought fleetingly of ballroom dancing. I, I love ballroom. Do you? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. Definitely yes. quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> um, but, oh gosh, you do. Do you, do you actually do ballroom dancing? I was um, in training. Really? Yes. <laughs> I do come from a busy place, Liverpool, originally. So that's where I grew oh, up. Right. And now I live in the country, so that was right. Oh, good. Jane's done very well for a beginner. She's... Um, She's picked up how to open up and how to do the closing down. With the flower reading, I think she did particularly well because to get anything for the first time is, 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 is great. And, and, and the sort of information that she gave was sort of spot on to the person who she gave it to. So I think she's on a very good start there, really. Although encouraged by my first training exercise, I did feel a little unnerved. So I sought out parapsychologist Kieran O'Keefe for some down-to-earth explanations. The kind of most specific things, I guess, were ballroom dancing and a teenage boy making someone angry. In terms of uh, the ballroom dancing, you know, my first question is, well, how old was the client? Is it kind of the high probability statement that somebody of a certain age group may accept? The issue with the, the teenage argument, the teenage angst, if you will, you have to work out, right, would that apply to other people? But straight off the bat, it's quite an unusual thing to come out with. For you not to be aware of any sort of pseudo-psychic techniques that you could use or high probability statements, again, it's quite an unusual statement just to come out with and say, oh, I'm getting ballroom dancing. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why I came out with it. I mean, I, the only thing I did was just clear my head and say the first things that came into it. You see why it's an issue of, is it simple guesswork? Is it just something you came up with? Or is the source of it some sort of paranormal source? So how did that stuff get into my head? Steve had mentioned the idea of spirit guides. Apparently, we all have our own set of spirits who look after us and protect us, helping to guide only appropriate spirits to contact us. They sounded almost like the invisible friends that kids have. I met up with my psychic mentor, Angela, to find out more. Today, what I'd really like to do with you is to do the tuning in. You can then call in and ask for help and information or even specific questions to be answered. Now, it could be from your guides who are starting to come in and work with you and must be around you now. I, I can sense that they are. What I want you to do is do the tuning in and you're going to say, as I raise myself up, I ask that only the highest, highest may enter. May enter. Okay. I call to the call universal to the source. And the universal source and the great spirit and ask for a message for Angela. Okay. Um... The thing that popped into my head was, it was like a woman's face with very long, dark hair. Um, straight, long, dark hair, maybe like in a little parting. I'm sorry, God, I, now my mind's gone completely blank. Okay. Keep trying. So. And always ask, ask again in your mind, can you give me evidence? And also a name that they've just shouted to you. You've heard a name. I'm eavesdropping. I've heard nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear anything. Okay. The only name, but it's only because now I'm kind of, I wasn't thinking it through, but the first name that popped into my head, but I don't think, I, I didn't hear anything. The name that popped into my head was Alice. 
Is that what you got? <laughs> yes. No. And it happens to be my grandmother. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's so true. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm now so startled. <laughs> do anything else. Today is the day. Because <laughs> we've got to get you forward and we've got to put you through the exercise with the public. Oh my god. Okay. Angela had hatched a very scary test to see if I could channel messages to complete strangers at a smart Chelsea cafe. Would unsuspecting members of the public really let me try to give them messages from their dead relatives? I had an awful feeling they would. Hello. Oh, I was just thinking of the name Amanda. Amanda? Yeah. No. no. Do you play tennis? No. 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 <laughs> That's completely wrong. Did you buy someone a necklace any time as a gift? No. No, no. It was something that would have meant a lot to them. New York. I've never been to New York. <laughs> um. No. no. Oh, I'll never be up for my final test if I can't come up with something here. Come on. Oh, I can't seem to tune into anybody's wavelengths. Two names coming to my head, which was uh, Rachel and Eric. I don't know if that's at all. Rachel, not at all. Eric, and it's my pseudonym in a magazine once. When you walked over, thought of the name Toby. Toby, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking about a friend called Toby. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. A young man. My husband, 23 years younger. Oh, really? <laughs> Something to be studying of. In other Southern, countries. In other or, countries, yeah, yeah. yeah. My, my girlfriend's actually, I've just seen her and she's going away to study. Oh, really? In South France, I'm not going to see her for ages. Oh, hang on, is this it? I actually tuned in. And I, I don't know, I just had an image in my head of a woman who had a, a like a canal boat or a houseboat with a barge, a friend. I know. Oh, that was my manageress when I had a shot. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, she lived on the boat. Oh, <laughs> oh the name um, Wacking came into my head for some reason. Wacking, yeah. Oh, I've got a painting by a guy called Wacking. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, say yeah, again. <laughs> The name um, Wacking came into my head. Oh, I've got a painting by a guy called Wacking. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> the skeptics frequently put forward the arguments about these sort of readings as being vague and ambiguous and that you could interpret anything from them and also using a technique that's called cold reading where as well as the vagueness and ambiguity and enticing cooperation and asking you for information there's the issue of getting information from you because of your body language and clothes. Now these are sceptical arguments and there are pseudo psychics around who can perform very well using these techniques what keeps me interested is if you actually sat down and looked at real world readings every now and again there are nuggets of information there are little pieces of information that are very very detailed and you think well where on earth did this come from evidence is clearly hard to find but ever determined i felt i had to try and have a go i'd cooked up an experiment with the help of a psychic who kindly agreed to give someone a reading she'd never met had no prior knowledge of and would not see or hear during the session. Diane is a braver woman than I. A lot of psychics would not want to, and they wouldn't be prepared to be involved in, in uh, looking into the process in this way. I mean, was there, is there a reason why you didn't mind doing it? I love a challenge, possibly. <laughs> and at the end of the day, if spirits are there and they want to let themselves known and prove a point to people, the sceptics, which I am the biggest sceptic there is, um, because I believe, if I see it, fine, I, 
we're all the same at the end of the day. So you're saying you believe it because you've seen it? I, yeah, I believe in me. I'm not saying I believe in every psychic. Sorry to say that. <laughs> no, you know what? I'm glad but, you said that. Because yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I believe in every psychic. No. Sam was our volunteer subject. She was completely unknown to Diane. Once Sam was in position, Diane took her place behind the screen. I could hardly wait for the session to start, as Diane had just told me that she normally has a hit rate of 99.9% .9 accuracy. How astonishing would that be? Sam was to sit behind a screen during the reading, trying not to make a sound. Diane was not able to see or hear Sam until after the reading. I had the task of taking detailed notes for discussion later. You do get um, impatient with situations with work. Or you always fiddle with your hair at all times. I feel that you liaise with lots of different types of people in your workplace, and I do feel that you've got to talk to people on all different levels. Okay. Your mother is extremely fussy, very fussy about the house. But she's shown me something with a blind or a problem with a blind or somebody's talking about windows. I tend to be a bit of a giggler at times. Okay. I'm picking up her hair too. Hopeless at making up your mind, really hopeless at making up your mind. I'm giving the name Rob, but I feel this person is somebody that is around you whilst on earth. I don't feel this person links the spirit. Susan, everything's going to be okay. Well, Susan, everything's going to be okay. Okay. I've got you as a little girl now, okay. You had wavy hair too, very wavy hair. Okay, shiny hair. You've got your gran um, that's in the spirit world. I do feel this link to your mum, because I've seen her standing behind your mum. Um, she's the type of lady that wore lipstick and emphasised the lipstick all the time. OK. OK, I do feel this on a grandmother level. I do feel she's coming through saying that she's been, she was in hospital for quite some time before she passed over. She was having chest complaints. And I'm going to the lungs, I'm not going to the heart. OK. I'm troubling breathing. OK. I know that can come across as a general old biddy, but I do feel she was going back and forth to hospital with problems with her chest. But a very, what can I say, independent woman. Um, would do everything for herself and wouldn't ask anybody to do anything for her. I'm looking at you at the age of seven now. I'll see what else, what other information she's got to say. <laughs> I'm watching you, you'd give your last, your last bag of sweets out to your friends. Okay, what do you mean? Time to find out which of the details rang a bell. My ground was very, very tall and very sprightly and, and very over the top, which yeah. fits in with all the independent things. It was a very sort of, and until she got ill, she did look much younger than she was. Right. When I seen I could see that she was having problems with her lungs. They emphasised her lungs, not her chest. Because I didn't want to yeah. emphasise it wasn't the heart. You know, because some people could turn around and say, oh, you know, several people passed over. But it was the lungs. And I could feel the burning in the lungs. Some of those names and the May There was no denying the fact that Sam had felt that much of the information had been absolutely spot on. And she'd found the reading very moving. So, is this helpful proof? Um, what we should also do is maybe have a chat to Sam's friend Charlotte. Hello. This is a bit awkward because I've just done an experiment and the results have kind of surprised me a bit. Out of uh, 55 statements made by Diane, um, 39 were true for Sam, which is almost 71%. Then I got this other idea and basically I just uh, ran through all of the statements with anyone who came into my house this weekend. For me, um, 39 out of 55 statements is correct, which is the same number as there was for Sam. <laughs> David, 33 out of 55, 60%. My friend Morwenna, 63%. My friend Ricky, 65%. And weirdest of all, my friend Jane, 72%. Actually, more of them were familiar to her than they were to Sam. I 
I really don't mean this as a criticism of Diane. Um, it's not intended as that. Um, it just goes to show that perhaps how similar a lot of our lives are. Um, and that is why it's very, 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 very hard, just as Kieran was saying, to find bang on proof. Everyone had a problem with their kitchen blind. How weird is that? And what's really weird actually is all of them had friends called Sue or Susan who were worried about something. I'm not drawing any conclusions from this. I'm just, I've just collated the data as I believe uh, Kieran would like me to say. And I thought it was interesting and I wanted to share it. Steve's just dropped a bit of a bombshell. I just spoke to him on the phone and I found out what my final challenge is going to be. And I had a horrible feeling that this was going to happen. Uh, the news is that I have to get up on stage at the Spiritualist Church and uh, do a platform reading myself. Uh, that means I have to get up there and see if anybody from Spirit is going to contact me with a message to relay to a loved one of theirs in the audience. Uh, the whole thing's just freaked me out. Just try and visualise those people. Used to feeling really terrified. After the break, I face a final test for which no amount of training yeah. could ever be enough. Really... There's a lot of energy. There's actually people waiting to come on. 